Yo dog, Kenny here, next level painting. Let's jump right into it. Purple, laying it down. On what? Psh, you guessed it, the most exciting thing in the world of Warhammer. Elves on horses. Don't lie, it's why you got into the game. Um, <clears throat> so I'm just laying down these purples super quick. Um, this is kind of my process, even though the horses are obviously not gonna be purple. Um, you, you'll see in later steps why I do this, because it just saves so much time in the, you know, in the late game. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and walk you through most of the process in today's video, like, you know, a long, it's, it's a good long 10 minute video about, you know, laying down the, the base work of horses. You can see here, here, I mean, here they are, you know, they're looking kind of weird. They don't make any sense just yet. Um, but like I said, bear with me. I'll walk you through this entire process. Yet again, another interesting way I like to do things. You'll see here that I'm laying the gold down. Um, yet again, it looks super weird, but you'll see in the late game, I'm going to save a lot of work. Like, you know, this, pro th this, you know, took me X amount of time later when I start cleaning things up and like wiping out the elver spray, you'll see that like this, you know, 20 minutes saved two hours, you know, with a paintbrush later in the end game. It's all about making the airbrush do work for you. You can own an airbrush, but if you don't use the airbrush appropriately, you're not going to really save any time. Um, it is a tool. I say this all the time. So as you can see, here's the gold. The gold's coming down just nice, super easy, spotting it on. They're finally gonna start looking like horses, you know. Um, I'm laying down a brown, probably a burnout brown, I don't know, like browns, I got a lot of good browns in my arsenal. Laying down the dark brown first, um, you know, but it's not as dark as it's gonna be. Uh, I like to wear kind of a dark mid-tone. Um, so you see here, I'm just laying it on, laying it on, laying it on. Um, this is like the grind. This is the the assembly line of the pro painting world, you know. And this is like a major skill you can definitely, you know, put in your arsenal. Like no doubt, you know, you just gotta sit down there, get them all lined up, you know, and just do the same thing over and over again. That repetition, be consistent, and get the same thing every time, you know, just gotta get in that rhythm. <clears throat> and as you can see, like the rhythm has been preserved. Um you know, in later videos, I'll talk more about the mechanical element, like, because I know a lot of people are probably asking questions like, well, my airbrush clogs up, this and that. Well, I've cut out a lot of scenes of me adding, you know, paint into the pot and me clearing the pot. You know, at one point, I will do a video on, like, the mechanical elements of the airbrush, how to keep that airbrush pumping. Here they come, they're coming along looking a little bit more like horses. I'm using like a gray, like a and like a standard army gray. It's kind of an interesting color, but I really like the way it interacts with a brown. Coming through and I'm just finding the points, you know, the legs, the noses, the tails, the manes, just popping that, blending it back into the brown. You know, this is where you gotta be real subtle because you don't want it to speckle all over the place. And you know, like a little bit of water, you know, a little bit of maintenance, a little, just a little bit of paint in the pot, that goes a long way. And you can see they're starting to look a lot more like horses now. Uh, but as you can see, just real subtle, just the same thing every time, like I said. Here they are. You can see them all laid out. You know, real easy what I've done here. Uh, like I said, they're starting to come along looking like horses. You can see. Here's the detail work. This is where you gotta get precise. This is a little bit of a slower process. You know, get your headphones on, you know, jam your music out. This is where you just gotta sit down and just get it done. I'm very precisely applying pure whites at the very tips of these, of these gray points. The problem with white here is I'll give you guys a little secret. It's like white, no matter what, my, white has a bad habit of speckling. It's just because it is the it literally is the brightest. It's the brightest color. And you know, it's gonna speckle. So what happens is paint builds up on the needle in the airbrush. And then as more paint comes out, it kind of disrupts the flow a little bit and starts shooting it out everywhere. Just gotta take your time. You know, I use a little toothbrush and I just kind of clean the needle every like, every time I do a guy. So that way, you know, it's it's ready to go to the next guy and clean it again. Very slow process, but it's it will reward you for being patient every time. Here we are just doing um, 
kind of like my reverse technique. Now I'm coming back to the darker color. I'm applying black to like the, the raised areas. Um, real subtle, you know, like the around the tail, like at the base of the mane. Some areas where it interacts with the, with the straps, just kind of create that depth, but also that final transition for the horse. Um, you know, you want it to look, you know, you know, dynamic. You don't want it to be this one color, especially since we're leaning on this airbrush effect. You know, you gotta, you gotta do the work. You gotta make it look transitioned. So it's not just about going from your color to the brightest. Sometimes I go back to a darker color later. <clears throat> I know a lot of guys don't do that, but it's the next level. Here's um, here's what I was talking about before. Now I'm coming back with the same purple I started with. And I'm doing the details, wiping out all the overspray. I was careful this whole process to not completely destroy the purple. Um, we were going to destroy some of it, but what you're left with is you're left with a purple that has a little brown on it. It's really easy to go wipe that out with the purple again. So it's you know this is this is one of those things I said. Twenty minutes saved me two hours, um, all the way back from step one. So this is one of my favorite techniques. It's a time saver. It looks really weird for a while, but it always works out. As you can see, they're looking fresh, you know, to speak for himself. Coming back to the gold, um, you can see where I saved a lot of, a lot of time by spotting on that big field of gold. That saved the bulk of the gold. Now it's just about that precision detail coming around all those little spots. Yet again, another 20 minutes of work, saving two hours in the back end, having to paint that big old area. I like, um, I like for golds, I like to use these Vallejo Air Golds. They go on so easy, man. Like they are the sickest, smoothest, uh, you know, uh, metals. I don't use them for everything, but I'll use them for gold all day, man. It's as you can see. I mean, they're looking, looking bright, looking fresh. You can't, you can't argue with the results. And here they are, just looking dope. I mean, <clears throat> for some people, this is done. I mean, this is like this is a tabletop standard for some people. Um, obviously, this next level painting, we're gonna take it up a notch. Now I'm coming in with the airbrush again. This is one of my favorite tricks. I'm gonna take that same purple. I'm gonna mix it up with a brighter color like a magenta I'm gonna come in and start spot spotting on the highlights um this is this is one of those easy ways to just use that airbrush take it to another level like I'm trying to you know marry quantity and quality together so I have to do a lot of these models to a quality that is beyond tabletop standard but I can't just sit there and just wet blend every surface like that's that's it literally impossible to succeed with you know in the in, in the production world um you can see like how good it's starting to look like after i do the magenta i'm going to come in with a little bit of pink and then finally a little bit of white mixed in with the pink um i try to stay away from a pure white just because like you know too much speckling i don't like the i don't like the unnatural look that you know that it that it has but ultimately you know who cares and this is like pretty much the final step in, you know, blocking in these colors. Uh, these are blocked in, ready to be like ready for the next stage. This is, these are not done. I'm blocked in all the colors. I still have a bunch of writers, like and that'll be next week's video. You know, I'll get into more of it later. Yo, check me out next week for the startling conclusion of these L's on these horses. And don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel that you're watching right now. Thanks for watching, players.